Thank you. Okay, so good morning, everybody. So after geological heterogeneity and uncertainty, we will uh, speak about cost, and this is a real medium where we have a lot of such heterogeneity and uncertainties. And first, I want to thank uh, IH committee also for having invited me, and especially the organizing committee of this, uh, this conference. So the course is a complex structure, and understand the functioning of such medium is not that easy. And there are large numbers of modeling tools, and the objective of this talk is to try to understand what we can learn from these various modeling methods. So first, if we look at uh, karst groundwater resources around the world, you can see from this world aquifer map that uh, karst landscape are pretty uh, spread all over the world, and they also have a large uh, interest because they are provided 25 uh, groundwater, sorry, for about 25 percent of the world population, and. In this area, you also have some uh, risk related to uh, karst hazards, such as sinkholes, dissolution processes. Thus, understanding the processes and functioning of such system is quite a, a big challenge for all these uh, people. There is a classical conceptual model that I'm showing here. There are many conceptual models about uh, karst. But generally, we can consider that there is a soil and epicars compartment, an unsaturated zone, and a saturated zone. And within each of these compartments, you have conduit, fractures, matrix, or fission matrix. And each of these compartments has very important impact on the flow processes. If we look at the epicars, it will regulate the recharge signals and have a strong effect on storage. When I'm speaking about the regulation of recharge, it means that within the epicast, we will have the recharge that will be either concentrated or towards the conduits or the diffuse recharge more all over the catchment. Within the unsaturated zone, there is a redistribution of this recharge signal with some retention. And within the saturated zone, we can uh, constant that we have many types of flow, dual flow, triple flow, continuum, and within the conduit there is either turbulent flow or free surface flow that may have some large impact on the groundwater hydrodynamics. Other processes within such system are the dissolution processes, and these dissolution processes depends of uh, large number of factors such as uh, the location of heterogeneities, the location of uh, inception planes that will help to generate cost conduits and will have a great impact on the geometry. So if we look at the numerical models for cars, there are a lot of uh, models for cars, either for cost uh, hydrodynamics, either for uh, transport, or for reconstruction with pseudogenetic approaches, helping to be able to reproduce the cost generation as a function of various geological factors, such as the change in base level, the, the change in the hydraulic gradient, and so on. So let's start from the left. So with the lumped parameter models, generally we are reproducing discharge or hydraulic head variation at a single point. They are widely used because in the cost, in general, we do have some information at springs. Most of people working on cost catchment generally have information at springs. So they are widely used for these reasons. <coughs> Regarding the process-based models, there are many types of process-based models, and they allow us to look at the influence of the flow mechanisms, looking at synthetic case. Synthetic case as the one we saw before that can help us to understand many things about the uh, ongoing processes. Regarding non-reactive tracer uh, transport model, they are generally used to identify characteristic time to spring or to wells, and for reactive tracer models, they are used to better uh, have idea of the dissolution processes for costogenesis explanation. And pseudogenetics model, 
are also dedicated to carstogenesis, but they do not take into account the complex, uh, the complex processes of karst dissolution, precipitation of carbonates, and so on. <coughs> With this model, we can perform uh, many uh, sensitivity analyses to answer some questions such as the groundwater resource, such as the sensitivity of uh, some models to uh, groundwater abstraction and the influence of some particular flow mechanisms. <clears throat> also for the transport, either we will speak about groundwater vulnerability or on the contrary about carstogenesis when we are looking at uh, uh, reactive uh, transport models. So, with all this uh, type of models, we can also perform inverse modeling. And with uh, inverse modeling, we can get some information about the hydrodynamic par parameters uh, from, uh, for example, hydraulic tomography, or, for example, the analysis of hydrograph, thermograph, chemo chemograph at springs. And this will help to better understand the, the system. So what to build, what to learn. So there are traditional approaches with lumped or distributed parameters model, equivalent porous medium, dual continuum, dual conduit network, hybrid. The physics is pretty simple in terms of hydrodynamics and transport processes. And what to learn are basically some information about the functioning of the system as a cost catchment scale. So let's start with the lump parameter models. These models are pretty simple models with reservoir and uh, taking into account linear or non-linear discharge law. And they also can account for pumping, for variable uh, vessel zone connectivity, which means variable uh, transfer laws, spatial heterogeneity, and so on. These uh, models are used generally to calibrate spring discharge with a validation period and some prediction periods according to various scenarios such as the increase in pumping, change in climate change and so on. This model gives us information mainly about the partitioning between concentrated and diffuse infiltration and also about the hydrograph dynamics. With such models also, we can go uh, inside the internal system functioning. With this model, as you saw before, we can say, okay, we have on one side a capacitive compartment that we generally say, okay, this is a matrix compartment. We have a more transmissive compartment that is said to be the conduit compartments. And we can look at the exchange between both compartments following a given recharge event. So, Following this recharge events that you have as an example, you have an increase at the discharge and at the same time as uh, the pressure or water table within the conduit reservoir increases, you're feeding the matrix. And then afterwards, this is the opposite, the matrix is feeding the conduit. And when you have the chance to have a long time, uh, long time series, then you can look at all this uh, mechanism change over time. And uh, you can see on the uh, right hand side, the change in matrix storage over more than 30 years. And what we can see is that in the, in the 60s, most of the recharge of this capacitive compartment was in February, May, and progressively it switched toward later in the, in, in the year. So it gives you information about the functioning of your system when you have such information. Also regarding the contribution of the capacitive compartment as a function of the rainfall intensity, either at the annual time scale or at the monthly time scales. And what you can see is that the lower the precipitation, the higher the contribution with more variability at the um, monthly time scale. <clears throat> of course, uh, some uh, colleagues started in the 90s also to use this physically based model when you can reproduce uh, real uh, physics. 
and some simple examples were uh, done to look at the influence of the cardio, uh, conduit uh, network geometry within the system, conduit network density within such system, accounting for uh, partitioning of infiltration between conduit and matrix. And what they, they showed is that in this case, the geometry of the conduit has a very low uh, impact on the hydrograph uh, dynamics. And that most of the, the impact is coming from the density of the conduit network. So the first two models gives exactly the same hydrograph uh, hydrodynamic response, while the last model with a higher density gives you some, uh, I would say, just uh, more realistic dynamics with respect to what we are used to observe in cars, at least when they are mature car system. <laughs> so this is first kind of uh, information that we can get for, from this uh, synthetic case. Other information of synthetic case, uh, it was proposed in the 60s that if you look at the time lag between the increase in discharge and the decrease in concentration, it will give you an information about the conduit volume, saying that, okay, first all the water within the conduit will be evacuated, and then you will have uh, the uh, concentration changing. And what has been done is a very simple experiment looking at Okay, what is the uh, incidence of such uh, recharge, uh, concentrated recharge within a conduit toward the springs, a conduit being embedded within a matrix pulse uh, system? And what they showed is that in this case, you have a delay uh, between uh, the uh, discharge and the drop in concentration, that it's much more important than in the case of uh, conduits that would not be uh, interacting with the surrounding medium. So it means that when you are doing such approximation with such uh, kind of uh, data, you may overestimate part of the, of the conduit system. In this case, uh, there was an overestimation of about uh, 50%. And this also, also look at the signal in temperature. And what they show is that the signal in temperature has a slightly different behavior of the signal in concentration. And the, the suggest is to use this information in inverse models to better characterize the conduit geometry and density. So these are the simple approaches. There are enhanced approaches looking at inverse modeling, as suggested by the others, at, with uh, including complex hydrodynamics and transport processes, and also the pseudo-genetic uh, models that have a specific uh, functioning. What do we learn in this case? We do learn information about the hydraulic properties field, the scale of investigation. We do learn what are the uh, influence on these complex flow processes on discharge at spring or on uh, pumping within a wells. And uh, regarding the castogenesis, it will uh, help us to understand what are the conduit network geometry that are uh, identified in the field. So when you have the chance to have a site with many wells and to perform pumping in these wells, you can get enough data to have a hydraulic tomography of this site and perform some inversion of this field data. Of course, you will test your model with synthetic data, as we saw in the previous talk. It's very important to have some check about the methodology. And then you will propose some inversion that will give you information about the hydraulic properties estimate and the main flow path, this main flow path being possibly related to conduit fracture matrix. And if you have a transient signal uh, analysis within your system, you can also get information about the uh, storage map at the scale of, the, of uh, your investigated site. In a uh, course, uh, there is uh, also some uh, pumping for groundwater abstraction. And actually, we do not know very well what's going on where we are performing such pumping in a 
coarse uh, groundwater uh, systems. And here is an example looking at the influence of uh, linear flow or uh, turbulent flow processes on the hydrodynamic response to a pumping. And what has been shown is that first, there is a high sensitivity to the conduit diameter values with uh, sensitivity increasing while the conduit diameter is becoming small. Here the, there is an example with a conduit diameter of 50 centimeters. For the larger diameter of conduits, there was no incidence looking at the flow regime or looking at the looking at the drawdown and derivative curves. And what is observed is that in this case, due to turbulent flow, the flow regime changed from linear flow to bilinear flow. And it turns that you will have a lower extent of drawdown and a modification of, the, of this uh, flow that will result in an underestimation of your conduit uh, system. So for further uh, I would say uh, pumping for water supply or so on, you will just start with the bad uh, information on your models. Other uh, works focused on turbulent flow uh, processes within the conduit with a switch between laminar flow and turbulent flow according to Reynolds number and various, um, various law accounting for this turbulent flow. <laughs> and they show that Okay, if you look at the pulse within the conduit in the system, such as the simple system we saw before, the discharge will be much smaller than what will be expected with laminar flow. So it means that using laminar flow condition within your models might lead to some problems in terms of interpretation with the real data. Also, free surface flow has an uh, impact on uh, water flow with such kind of experiment. And you have a free surface flow, you have a change of the volume uh, uh, of uh, the, the area, sorry, of exchange between your matrix and your conduit that will vary according to the uh, water level within the conduit. If you're within a, a fully uh, conduit, then uh, uh, following the pulse, uh, the recharge pulse, you will have a direct transfer towards the springs. Well, in the case of uh, partly full conduit, there will be a delay, then changing progressively to uh, a filled conduit with uh, exchange with the surrounding matrix. Other type of models that were widely used since the 90s are the reactive transport models that aims at better understanding the uh, costogenesis within uh, synthetic models, most of the case because it's very difficult to handle re real data with uh, such complex model. So first, you have a 1D model, famous work from uh, Drebrot. Then many 2D modeling frameworks were proposed. And what to learn from this model is how cost forms and evolve over time, accounting for the influence of flow processes, dual medium flow processes, exchange flow, what is the influence of the final geometry of the car system, what is also the influence of mixing in such system. Boundary condition may also have a great effect on the final geometry of your car system with uh, hydraulic boundary conditions, of course, change in base level that are not accounted for, but uh, in terms of gradient variations, they, they have a strong impact on the final work, as well as the chemical uh, concentration uh, as, at the boundaries of the, of the system. And of course, also, all these castrogenesis processes are highly dependent on the heterogeneity of the medium, and also on the network geometry. Here there is an example with a real fracture network that has been used to simulate flow processes and dissolution processes. And if we look at the upper, uh, upper diagram, the dissolution processes are simulated according to the uh, uh, di uh, direction sorry, of the main fracture, according to the direction of the largest fractures. And we observe that we uh, 
are arriving to a breakthrough pretty rapidly and that we also have a progressive evolution from 2D flow to diffuse flow, which is uh, given as in terms of information with, uh, uh, with the correlation dimension. If we are looking at the carstogenesis processes across uh, in a perpendicular in a direction perpendicular to these main uh, fractures, then we can observe that the patterns are obviously very different, but we can also observe that there are many uh, uh, stabilization, increase in classification, stabilization, and also that the breakthrough is much later than in the previous case. Pseudogenetic models. So as I said before, these pseudogenetic models aim at accounting for base level variation over time. They aim at accounting for the presence of in, in, uh, inception uh, features, such as here, uh, stochastic discrete uh, factor networks. And uh, based on fourth parching algorithm or other al algorithm, they are looking for the lowest energy pass thinking that this lowest energy pass will correspond to the pass of groundwater, and if it corresponds to the pass of groundwater, it will be where dissolution will occur. And using such models and giving information about the number of SIM call or the number of injection points, you can end up with a large ensemble of uh, 3D cart network geometry that may be stochastically representative of the system that you want to uh, model. <laughs> it is more interesting with these models is when you are able to use uh, tr uh, transport data and uh, flow data within the models and perform uh, inverse uh, inversion of the data. In this example, you have a simulation of uh, stochastic coarse uh, networks, and then flow and transport were models, and the, um, the mass uh, transport was looked at the springs, and uh, performing many, many uh, simulations, like you can see with the blue curves, then you can identify out of the or the simulation proposed, which one best fits your data. And in this case, it gives you uh, information about the geometry of your conduit network that can be useful for the application to uh, real world modeling. So some bottleneck, uh, but hydraulic tomography, the scale is pretty limited. The physics of model is pretty simple with a simple forward model. Regarding the complex hydrodynamic and transport mechanisms, the physics is more sophisticated, but the high computational cost, and generally we are using very simple geometry. However, they are useful for sensitivity analysis, as we saw before. For the cast genesis and reactive transport model, they are largely limited to saturated zone, and also to simple geometry or boundary connection, and they require high computation cost when the dimension becomes large also. The pseudogenetic models, they do not account for the complex kinetic of car system genesis. So all of these models have advantage and disadvantage. So what perspective can we have? For example, looking at large scale pumping tests. Here we have an example with drawdowns that are reaching more than tens of meters in this case, we can assume that, uh, or we can suppose, imagine that there will be transition from turbulent flow to free surface flow and so on. And accounting for this uh, various cast conduit geometry within such uh, interpretation will help to better understand the uh, data gathered in the field. Other perspective with respect to hydraulic tomography, some inverse approach based on DFN, such as the one uh, that is uh, on the left hand side of the, the slides, help us to provide some inversion according to main fracture directions. But you see that in this case, the fracture directions are very simple. They are geometric patterns. What will be interesting is to use the 
classification types of geometry gathered from field data, such as the one proposed by Palmer, or this one, to constrain this model according to more realistic network geometry. For the uh, perspective in terms of process-based and long parameter model with this uh, reactive transport models, we see that we have a change of the network patterns, the coarse network pattern over time that might be interesting to compare with the various parameters that we do have, uh, we can obtain from the simple lumped parameter approach. Looking at all this recession coefficient, for example, change over time as a function of the maturation of the system. Also coupling this dissolution with multiphysics, accounting for mechanical effects, thermal effects, hydrothermal mechanical effects. Here you have an example that will be presented uh, later this morning, uh, taking into account a simple uh, synthetic case within a uh, uh, complex uh, stress state, which is actually changed from either vertical stress to uh, horizontal stress. And what can be seen here, and I encourage you to go further for further information to the talk, is that you have a large uh, impact on the geometry that is resulting from uh, this uh, stress state because of the enlargement sorry, of a fracture that will help dissolution processes accord, according to main direction. Other important processes that I did not address are Vados zone dynamics, CO2 circulation dynamics, so many uh, complex processes that are not widely known. So there's still a, a lot to learn and a lot to model. Thanks for your attention.